<laughs> but it feels good in here today. I mean, listen, I want to preach part three. I got a word for you. It's burning in my heart. So can I give it to y'all today? Can I just give you some quick points and let's make this happen? Amen. So the title of this whole series has been Pursue God, Don't Quit in the Dip. Everybody say, don't quit in the dip. Yeah, don't quit in the dip. Don't quit in the dip. And let me go ahead and preface this a little bit. If truth be told, if truth be told today, every champion has felt it. <laughs> every president has felt it. <laughs> every king has felt it. Every winner in life down here has felt it. Every soldier that fought for our land and our country has felt it. Every victorious person has felt it. And truth be told, if you're a true man or woman of God in here today, you have felt it, the urge to quit. Come on. You, you, if, you, if you've done anything for God, now listen, if you're not working for the kingdom, Satan got you right where he wants you. You can come to church and be as far away from God as you've ever been in your life. You can. I see it all the time. Listen, what God is doing here is special. I wouldn't take anything for what God's doing at this church. Is it uncomfortable? Yeah. Good. I'm so thankful for that. But listen, I want you to lean in this morning because I want to speak this over every person. Every person here today, every, every marriage, every child, every youth, every single person who's listening and watching by Facebook, wherever you're at. I want you to lean in. And I want you to lean in good. Because listen to me, don't you quit. I'm going to say it again. Don't you quit. Men and women of God, youth group, marriages, listen, you're a valuable person to God's kingdom. If not, he'd have took you on home. You are valuable to this house. You are valuable to your spouse. You are valuable to whatever you're going on in life. But look at me. Don't you quit. Don't you quit. I'm going to say it again to y'all. Get it. Don't you quit. Turn to everyone and say, don't you quit in the dip. Come on, talk to me today. Don't you quit in the dip. Don't you quit in the dip. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I love Ecclesiastes. It tells us about 28. Everybody say 28. It tells us about 28 different seasons in the Bible. 28 different times of life. It says there's a time to be born. There's a time to die. There's, there's a time for planning. And there's a time for reaping. There's a time for laughing. And there's a time for crying. There's a time for weeping. And even don't care if Baptists believe us or not, it says there's a time to dance. The Bible says there's a time, listen to this, there's a time on earth, on earth right now in every season, but not one time out of 28 seasons of life does it say there's a time to quit. Not one time, I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but somebody in here is on the urge, on the, the verge, and you're, you're thinking about, man, I'm, I'm out of this marriage. I'm out of this church. I'm out of this, my life. I hate work. I hate all this stuff. Listen to me. Don't you quit. Don't you quit. Here's what I'm trying to preach. Here's what I'm trying to preach. Everybody wants a blessed life. And watch this. You ready? You can have it. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and preface this a little bit. You really already have it. You're just looking at it wrong. Because you're looking at every mountain as a setback. Huh. But I serve a God that may set you back to set you up. He may set you back to set you up. He may set you back. You may be in the valley, but there's still a mountain. There may be something going on in your life. You say, Brian, I'm tired. I'm weary. I'm worn out. Welcome to life. Welcome to church. Who in, the, who in God's green earth said you can come to church and have it your way? Who said that? Listen, when you got people, you're going to have problems. We better learn to get along with each other. Preach it, head coach. I think I will. We better learn to love one another. We better learn how to fight for one another. We better learn how to stand up. Come on, y'all preaching better y'all. That's all right. I know I'm preaching now because it got quiet. It got really, really quiet. Listen, everybody wants a double portion. Double pushing, double pushing. Oh, you can have it. Everybody wants the anointing of God. Oh, you can have it. Everybody wants the glory of God to fall upon them. The glory of God to fill the temple. And you can have it. But there's only one way you can have it. Is if you don't quit in the dip. 
I'm not a real deep theologian. I just tell you like it is, and that's what God says. The reason why some of you are not experiencing victory is because you're quitting. Some of the, so the reason why some of you are not experiencing a full and abundant life is because you're halfway in and you're halfway out. You're halfway sold out. And they, matter of fact, the Bible calls that lukewarm. And he said, you want to make God sick? Just be halfway in, halfway out. Be a Sunday Christian only. So, oh, hello, the preacher. Yeah, just, just, just do, it, do it your way. Everybody have a Burger King mentality. Just have it your way. And I wrote this down in my personal notes. And if you're a note taker, I want you to take this down. God is not in the business of replacing damaged people. God is in the business of fixing damaged people. <laughs> preacher, preacher. He's, God don't want to replace you. God wants to fix you. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? Somebody say amen. God don't want to replace you. Well, I've just lost my anointing. <laughs> I pray God plows you today with the double dog D9 dozer. He drops the blade and uproots and tears up. I pray today you leave differently than you walked in. I pray today that something in your mind has just shifted and changed. Because, listen, you are a valuable person to the kingdom of God. If not, you would have been gone a long time ago. Somebody give him praise. It's true. It's true. God, God don't want to replace you. He wants to fix you. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, you're a mess just like me. I don't care if they're pretty, their hair's turned over. I don't care if they got a weave on. I don't, hey, I don't care who they are. Look at them again because they didn't get it. Say, you just like me. we both a mess. Yeah, we're both a mess. Yeah, we're both a mess. God don't want to replace you. Watch this. Y'all ready? I'm going to say something that a lot of people disagree. God can't replace you. There's only one Terry Easter. Thank God. Come on, Kelly. Preach with me. Yeah, there's only one Bobby Walker. Somebody say, ah, ha, ha, ha. Y'all felt that one, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, Hallelujah. I want to show you, tell you all something, man. This is a true story. There was a story told about a man parked on the side of the road. His car had broken down, and he had his hood up, and he was trying to fix, figure out the problem. And Jensen Franklin talked about this. I didn't come up with this. I just robbed Peter to pay Paul. It's a good story. A limousine pulled up behind him, and a man got out, and he was, he was dressed from head to toe like a million bucks. I mean, he looked fine. He walked over to the driver of the broken down car, and he said, do you need help? That's a, a dull moment. The man said, of course. Yes, I need help. And the man from the limousine, he, he tinkered around with the engine just a little bit. To the other man's surprise, the car started right up. Started right up. And the car's owner was beyond grateful. Very thankful. And he asked, how much do I owe you, sir? And the man said, you owe me nothing. You don't owe me anything. He said, I'm Henry Ford. I'm the creator of this car. I feel the Holy Ghost. And it really bothers me to see one of my cars broke down on the side of the road, not doing what I created it to do. Mm. We got a creator and his name is God. Hallelujah. And it bothers God when he looks down from heaven and he sees his church not doing what he created her to do. It bothers God when he looks down on creation and he sees humanity fussing and fighting and racism and killing and all the nasty things he didn't create her to do. It bothers God when he looks down from creation and sees marriages that he said, I do, and put them together, but they're not functioning together. God created us for signs, wonders, and miracles. God created us, whether you believe me or not. He said, you know what? Hey, there was not no hospital on First Jerusalem Street. God said, I've given you. Y'all may not like this kind of preaching, but it's time that the Bible is proclaimed back in the church today. It's time for the church to lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. It's time that signs, wonders, and miracles come out of your life today. It's time to get prophecy and tongues and all the things. Hey. That's all right, y'all. I, I'm going to tell God did not create me or you to be broken down. On the side of the highway. Just telling you, man. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm telling you. It bothers God. I mean, whatever you're going through. I thank God. Listen, this is hard. But Chris Wilson a while ago. 
He prayed the prayer and it stuck in my spirit. He didn't even look at my notes. But he prophesied back there in his prayer and he may not even realize this. Because you got to give God your ears. He said, God, I want to thank you for the dips in my life. It's hard, isn't it? God, I want to thank you. See, here's how you get faith. When you're at the point in your walk, your walk, it's not about how you feel. It's not about how people look. It's not about what's going on in just your life. I'm telling you, we've got a Henry Ford God. And he does not want his church sitting on the side of the highway, broken down, busted and disgusted, and don't know what's going on. I'm here today to proclaim under the anointing of God, things are lining up for God's glory. His church is lining up for him to come back. And you know what? In the last days, the Bible said, there will be greater things that you will do than what his son did, Jesus, when he walked filled the Holy Ghost. Uh, listen, I'm glad God's changed. I praise God. And y'all can look at me sideways if y'all want to. I am a divorced man, but I praise God for the dip. It ain't your story. Quit judging people. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Sugar diabetes. Fuss, 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 fuss. 200, 200, 250. 150. Up, down. This, and I finally got up this morning. Crazy, Logan. I said, God. Evidently, you're okay with this. And God, I, today, I want to thank you that you've given me the power and the wisdom to handle sugar diabetes and not sugar diabetes handle me. Y'all are letting, we're letting, we, we, we. If anything, I feel the Holy Ghost. If anything comes through these spiritual doors, it's because the church allowed it. Of course, the devils and demons are going to try to come in here and stop everything that God is doing. In there. Of course, if you've got a God-sent marriage, don't sit there and say, well, we're good today, baby. Watch out tomorrow. Yeah, the, the, yes, the devil is going to do what the devil was created to do. And don't think that worship is going to get you out of your season. Because he was a worship leader in heaven, and he got thrown down. Let me... So I'm trying to preach really good. I'm trying to teach y'all, disciple y'all, to teach me. How do we live? How do we get out of the dip? How do we get out of the dip? Listen, to me, whatever you're going through, whatever has happened to you, whatever loss or pain that you feel in your heart, listen, there's no time to quit. 10,000 Southern Baptist churches should have never shut their door. And I may be the only one that's going to stand up and proclaim that. But if God is greater in me than he is in the world, why are we shutting the doors? Why are we quitting? Brian, you just don't know my situation. You better be glad I don't. God does. God, don't wait. God did not wake up this morning and go, man, I forgot about that one. God never has, has an oops moment. He don't. Well, Brian, what about 9-11? He knew about it. What about 6 million Jews, Holocaust, that died? He knew about it. What about my sugar diabetes and my sickness? He knows about it. This is not our home, y'all. See, we know that here. If we believe the Bible like we say we believe the Bible, how many of you know dying ain't half bad? See, y'all y'all look at me like I'm crazy standing up here. Yeah, it is promotion. Everybody wants to stay under the demotion. God's wanting to promote you and you want to stay where you're at. Yeah, bring them back. I done told y'all if the Lord takes me home, don't y'all dare. Lord, we need our preacher. No, you don't. No, you don't. Don't pray for me to come back to this old stinking, nasty, sinful world. I'm just trying to give hell some hell today. I'm just trying to be the mouthpiece. Because y'all listen to me, that horn's going to sound. That horn is going to, it could, watch this, could be today. Are you ready? Some of y'all wanting to quit don't quit in the dip. So how do you not quit in the dip? Number one, real quick, I'm going to give you two points and we're out of here. I think. I said that last Sunday too and we ended up worshiping almost at one o'clock. It was great. It was great, man. How many, how many know it was great? It was just great. Yeah, I finally seen the church. I finally seen the church. Finally seen number one. How do you not quit in the dip? Number one, keep the faith. 
That sounds so simple. It sounds so simple until you get a bad doctor's report. It sounds so simple until, man, something happens in your life, a tragedy happens in your life, you bury a loved one, and things are happening in your life. Keep the faith. Everybody say, keep the faith. Listen, this is going to be tough, but it's, it's got to be spoken. It's got to be spoken. Because listen, if you do not keep the faith, you're going to be tossed to and fro, to and fro. You'll be hot one day, cold the next day. You've got to keep the faith. If you do not keep the faith, watch, you're going to quit in the deal. I see it all the time. People who get on fire for God, and the next thing you know, they walk out of church, they walk away from God, they walk away from the Word of God, they walk away from their friends, they isolate themselves. You know why? Because the devil's going to mess with you. If God is real, how come they're dying? How come this is going on? And how come this is not right? And you'll start questioning your mind. Watch, that's the devil's playground. He gets right here, half the battle's already won. You've got to make your mind up. You can listen to me. No matter how the adults act, no matter how leadership acts, no matter how your teachers act, no matter how, how your workplace acts, I believe in God. I'm keeping the faith. I'm not going to back down. I'm not walking away. This is who I am. I believe in God. I believe that Peter walked on water. I believe that there's a man named Daniel in the lion's den. I believe God put some super glue on their mouth. I believe in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You say, Brian, you're crazy. I believe it all. I believe in tongues. I believe in prophecy. You got to come in a time in your life where you quit debating the Bible and start believing the Bible. That was a game changer for BRAF. That was a game changer for me. That was a game changer. So here, here's you may you may lose a lot of stuff. How many you know? How many of y'all lost some stuff? I have. You've lost some stuff. How many of y'all? You may lose some friends. Some of y'all need to lose some friends. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing you must not lose is your faith. Is your faith. I don't care if 10 atheists are around you and they're dogging you. I don't care if agnostics come around you and say, you can't prove it. We got the best evidence right now that the world has ever had. It's called you. How do I know God's alive? I should be able to look at your life. I should, be able to, I should be able to watch you and look at you. See what proceeds out of your mouth, what's in your heart, how you act, how you treat people. I should see some fruit and some evidence of God working in your life. We got enough Galatians chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. How about some Galatians 5, 22, some fruit of the Spirit? Y'all want to show this world that Jesus is real? Just let, you just be still and watch him work through you. Listen to me. Don't, if you, lose, if you lose your job, I'm preaching, listen, keep the faith. <laughs> keep the, if, if, I'm telling, listen to me, if you lose your house, keep the faith. If you lose your health, keep the faith. If you've got heart trouble, diabetes, cancer, what I'm pre, listen to me, you better have to take one thing in your life. You better keep the faith. You better keep the faith. Keep the faith. And I need somebody who's here today that's got Holy Ghost faith that can testify. If God done it for me, God can do it for you. Somebody help me. If I'm a witness that I was once lost, but now I'm found. I was a witness. I was in the ditch. I was a drunk. I was in the bar. I was on the bar stool, but somebody... Come on, let's just praise him just for a second. I want you to be a testimony of those Facebook people who are watching today that God rescued you. God brought you out of the miry clay. God stood you up on the solid ground. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yeah, because watch this. It's not if you're going to have troubles and trials and tribulations. It's when. You know the worst thing that I see out of Christians, or so-called Christians, is man, when the going gets tough, they, they, they back off. You know, it's something, when somebody's dying, that's the real you. You know, when somebody's dying on their deathbed, I had a lady from this church. She was in her late 70s. She called me one day and she said, I need you to come to my house. 
all the way there, Willie, I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, I, I need to go back and get my oil because I know she wants me to pray for her to get healed. I know that and when I walk in there, she's going to say, lay hands upon the sick and she'll recover. I walked into that house. And she said, come here and sit on the side of my bed. And I did. I went over to her and I sat on the side of her bed. And, and she looked at me. She squared me up. She said, you believe what you preach, right? Yes, ma'am. You believe all them songs that you sing in church, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. I, I believe that. She said, I'm ready. And, and I've been in doing this for t- almost 25 years. And that was the first time I seen somebody on their deathbed. Say, I'm ready. I fought the good fight. I've ran the race. In store for me is a crown of righteousness. I get to lay it at my father's feet. Pray for me to go home, Brother Brian. And I sat there for a few minutes. I'm like, I've never done that. Because I've always prayed healing. But how many of you know to be made whole, you got to exit? And man, I prayed over her. And by the time I got back, it's a true story. By the time I got back to Elkhorn Baptist Church, she had left her body. Her soul and her spirit had met the Lord. Hallelujah. And she's with Jesus here today. I'm telling y'all, you're going to go through some dips. But the dips are not for you. They'll make you stronger. They'll help you get through life. We got a bunch of sissy Christians. They don't know what a hit is. They don't know what a dip is. We got a generation now that's looking at some adults saying, my God, if mom and daddy quit, I can quit mom and daddy. Hallelujah. Stand up. Throw your head up. Put your shoulders back and fight for Jesus. Everybody say, keep the faith. I can't settle down. I had one man tell me, he said, you're probably going to die of a heart attack up on that stage where your face gets red. Watch it. I don't care. Let me go. Because listen to me. Here's what I'm saying. I want you to put this on the big screen. I'm going to go to number 10. We're out of here. You can preach a better sermon with your life than you can your lips. You can preach a better sermon with your life than you can your lips. Huh. You can preach a better sermon with your life than you can with your lips. There was a young man named Jason who's over in China when we was adopting Destiny. And he asked me a question. He said, um, Preacher, what if you couldn't speak? And I said, That'd be a bad day in hell right there. And he looked at me like y'all are right now. And uh, he said, Over here in China, we can't verbally go on the roads. They don't speak like that. But I'm, that's my Australian. That's my. my Come on, y'all, don't look at me like that. And he said, we can't, we can't witness on the streets like Americans can. He said, we got an underground church. He said, but people, people can look at our lives and see which direction we're heading and know who we worship. People should be able to look at your life. And see where you're heading, hallelujah. And see a good God that's working in your life. It's not about what's coming out of your mouth. The devil believes. It's about what you're living. It's about the seeds that you're sowing. And I'm just here to testify. And I know this may be a a sermon that's sitting there going, Brian, I want it. Don't quit in the dip for for the greater is he. It's coming. But I'm just sitting telling you, listen to me. Don't be shocked and surprised if the government comes against churches. Don't be shocked if you have to come to jail to visit your pastor. I'm, I'm telling you, if I go to jail, it's going to be Paul, Silas, and Brian. Because I'm telling you, everybody in my jail said going to go to heaven. They're going to they be saying, get this crazy nut out of this jail. So put him over there in room one. It's real. Why do we think we're so much better than Paul getting tied to two trees and sewn in two? Why do we think we're so much better? Why do we think we're better than John the Baptist? Who preached Jesus, who loved God, but got his head cut off. Why do we think we're better than John the Apostle? Who got thrown in six feet of boiling oil. 
And they said that Josephus said his skin was just dripping. And they picked that joker up, Jenna, and put him on the island of Patmos. And I love this in Revelation chapter 1. I love this, Jimmy. It says, it, <laughs> and, and, and John, the apostle, John the Baptist got killed. This is the, uh, the apostle, the revelator. Oh, got out of six feet of bowling oil, put on the island of Patmos, and I love this. See, a lot of people would have quit. A lot of people would say, God, and I served you all my life. And I love Jesus. He, just, he didn't waver. He didn't waver. He said, John, I'm getting ready to put a pen, not a pencil, but a pen, in your hand. And there's one book missing out of the Bible called the book of Revelation. And if John the, the apostle, the revelator, would have stopped quitting the dip, I'm telling you, the book of Revelation would not have had the power and the anointing that he had while he was sick and hurt. Some of you have dropped the pen. Some of you have quit. Some of you are sitting under my teaching today, and you're sitting there going, Brian, how did you know? It's not me. It's the Holy Ghost. The book of Revelation was written with a man who just got out of six feet of bowling oil. Ski. Coming down, his hands all withered up. I don't, I don't know. I'd like to say I could write it, but you know what? I, God's working on me. We all got room to grow. And I hope this challenges you, but the book of Revelation, the Bible says, and it was the Lord's day. And whether you believe it or not, it was the Lord's day. And the Bible says, and John was in the Spirit. Because see, the Spirit can do things that your flesh can't. Y'all didn't hear the word. I, your Spirit can do things that your flesh can't. Your flesh is wanting you to stop. Your flesh is wanting you to quit. Your flesh is wanting you to bow down. Your flesh is wanting you to bow out. But I'm telling you, God says there's somebody living in you that is greater than anything, any obstacle, anything you're going up against right now. And his name is the Holy Spirit. He's great. And he'll get you out. Same way he got you in, <laughs> he'll get you out. Yeah, well, I'm in trouble. He'll get you out of trouble. Well, Brian, I'm in a ditch. He, he's a good ditch remover. I'm telling you, he'll get you out of the ditch. You say, what's going on? I'm telling you, listen, you can preach a better sermon with your life than you can. Look, number two, believe God is going to do what he says he's going to do. Y'all wouldn't believe the phone calls, the emails that I get from people. No, no wonder... Churches are shutting their doors. If I was the devil, this is not Paul Harvey, but if I was the devil, I would do exactly what he's doing to some of you right now. He's trying you. He's telling you, if God is real, how come this is happening? And so, here's the thing. He's messing with you. He's messing with you, but you got to believe. You got to have faith. You got to believe God is going to do what He says He's going to do. Listen to me. God is always doing more than what you can see. God, right now, right now, some of y'all are needing a financial blessing. What if you were to just to thank God for the blessings that's already come? The checks in the mail. You say, Brian, I don't believe in that price. Why are you broke? And I understand there's people over in Kenya, Africa. My, one of my missionary friends sleeps on a dirt floor. But he's more blessed on a dirt floor than some of you are on carpet. Here's what I'm just saying. It's okay to pray. But watch this. Do you really believe what you're praying? Come on. Do you really believe what you're praying? You've got to put some action you can pray it all day, but there's got to come a time in your life. I believe. I believe everything that God spoke to me, he's going to do it. And listen, the same God that made a way for you last time, hallelujah, is the same God that's going to make a way for you this time. If God said it, that sells it. And I believe it no matter what. Here's the deal. I'm to a good point in my life. If every one of y'all did not believe, I still do. My friends do not dictate me. Churches do not dictate me. 
spiritual gurus, do not do it. You know why? Because I believe it. And I don't even have to say a word. Because I'm telling you, I'm looking at a bunch of thermostats today. Let's change the temperature in this community. Let's change the temperature in our school systems. Let's change some temperatures at our workplace. Let's change some temperature at Elkhorn Baptist Church. I believe the Bible. And God said greater things are going to happen before he comes back. And it always gets worse before it gets better. So all this COVID stuff, I'm going to still praise him. Well, Brian, what happens if you get diagnosed? If he gets me in, he can get me out. What if he takes you home? I'm better off than you are. You say, Brian, you're just too easy. No, I just don't complicate it. <laughs> just don't complicate it. Quit trying to complicate Jesus. Y'all ready? Here's the gospel. He loves everybody. I don't care what Southern Baptists say about all that Calvinism, isms. Watch the isms. When he died, don't tell me he put his son on the cross just for a few people. When he hung his son on the cross, his blood is still going north, east, south, and west. He loves all people, red and yellow, black and white. He loves them with tattoos, without tattoos. He loves homosexuals as much as he loves you. Say, boy, well, there went 10 emails. It's all right. I see, I can prove you wrong. With the word of God. The word of God is established. Y'all hear me. Look at me. You can't change the word of God. There are two, you know why there's 131 denominations in Teller County? They want it their way. Amen. They do. Well, Brian, you know, my cousin is a preacher. Well, I don't care. I'm just telling you. Follow the word of God. It leads to the promised land every single time. Somebody give God praise. I'm almost done. Praise team, you guys come. I'll leave you with this. I always stopped in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. I always stopped in ver on verse 9 until Friday. I want to give you the rest in 2 Corinthians. Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 through 12 y'all with me Sam with you but I, I speak this over your life because here's the deal I can look at some of you I know you're struggling I can look at some of you you've got unforgiveness in your heart I can look at some of you you're, you're, you're struggling so much by your family your children your grandchildren and I want to leave this with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 12. Is it all right if I read this over y'all? Are y'all going to receive it? Because you've got a decision right now. The Bible says, we often suffer. <laughs> often. But we are never crushed. Hallelujah. Even when we don't know what to do. Whew. Whew, I felt that one. How many of y'all have ever been to a point... Man, I have done all I know to do. I don't know what else to do. I have fought a good fight. It's still coming at me. It's crushing me, it feels like. You prayed over your children. You prayed over your loved ones. And they're still acting like Jerry Springer. We often suffer, but we're never crushed. Even when we don't know what to do. Look at this. Can't somebody just praise God on that one right there? Come on, can somebody write? I I'm going on. I don't even know what to do, but I'm not giving up. Hallelujah. I don't know why my children are acting the way they're acting, but I'm not giving up. I don't know why things are going the way they are, but I'm not giving up. Y'all hear me? Lean in. I'm not giving up. I'm going to give hell hell today. I refuse for people to die and go to hell. It's real. I don't even know what to do. But one thing I know I'm not going to do is give up. I feel the Holy Ghost. Watch this. In times of trouble, God is with us. Mm. I preach. And when we are knocked down, we get up again. We face day, death every day because of who? Now hold on, preacher. You done crossed the no, no, no. That's what the 
We face death every day because of... Y'all chew on that one. I chewed on that Friday, and I'm still chewing on it. We face death every day, because, not because of sickness. Chew on this one. This is a good Bible study. Because of Jesus. There's such a good word in that. See, it's a mess of religious people. They're sitting there going, Brian, just chew on it. We face death every day. Every day because of Jesus. Our bodies show what hit. Our bodies show what his death was like. So that his life. Can also be seen in us. Wow. This means that death is working in us. Uh oh. But life is working in us. So you're going through some stuff to show this world that you're no better than Jesus. He went through some stuff. That's why I take moments like this serious. People who come to church and patty cake. And sit there and don't worship. You mean to tell me? I don't want anything about a shout. But the shout's in me. This stuff's real. I bank on it. I put my life on it. I'll fight you for it. I sure will. You may whip me. But you ain't going to whip me in the spirit. Look at me. Somebody here today. Why are you going through what you're going through? It's because of Jesus. You are evidence that if Jesus made it, you can make it. No matter what the deal is, no matter what the situation is, no matter what's going on in life, no matter if you got a bad doctor's report, watch this. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. And God, evidently, you know what's going to happen. You know my body. You know this. You're God. You're sovereign. You know everything about me, God. But I choose you. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to quit. It don't matter if the whole world turns against you, God. As for me and my house, I'm going to worship you. Oh, God, we love you in this house. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Some of y'all right now, you just need to make your minds up. Get, get the quit option out of your mind. Get it out of your mind. Stop it! Jimmy, Allison, don't you stop? You know why? Because evidently God knows. He said, you're going through what you're going through. Not for, not for that, because of Him. You are proof, you are evidence. Because you're a man of God and you're a woman of God. Hallelujah. He'll never put on more on you than what you can handle. Why? Because he's carrying you. We pay more attention to stuff. They don't like me. They didn't like Jesus. What? <laughs> Teenagers. I'm going to preach just for me. No, I'm gonna, listen to me. Listen to me. This is for real. They're not going to like you. You answered the call to preach, right? Here, stand up just for a minute. We're going to make this public right now. You know, he said, oh, God, that's right. No, listen. We, listen, this is for real. This is a senior at Camelsville. I'm alumni. I can, hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two things good come out of Camelsville. So, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm done. Let me stick in the vein. Let me stick. He's called to preach. It's our job. It's our job to disciple him. To grow. I'm glad he's in a Holy Ghost Spirit filled church. That he can get taught right. That we don't have the power or the authority to tell God what he can do and what he cannot do. All things are possible with God working through this young man. So you're, you're called to preach. So you're called to preach, right? Right. Called to preach. Listen to me. I'm going to help you really quick. This is great. 16 weeks at Campbellsville University right here. They're not going to like you. Now give me $702. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. They're, they're not going to like you. When, you. when you preach, they're not going to like you. Your family's not. Your mom and daddy will and your brother. But other than that, man, good luck. Look, don't come back to my office and say, Brian, they don't like me. I'm going to say, I told you on the 21st day of February, they ain't going to like you. Terry, they ain't going to like you blowing that horn. So, what's it called so far? They ain't going to like that. They ain't going to like you. There's going to be something like, oh, God. 
There goes the whoo! Here goes the horn. Blow it, blow it anyway. You don't blow it for them. Amen. Well, they ain't gonna like you. Jeff, they ain't gonna like you praying in the Holy Ghost. Putting oil on the doors. Why you do it? You mess up doors. See, that's how religious people act. I thank God we got a praying woman of God that puts oil on the doors and says, God, no weapon formed against us should ever prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us shall be condemned. We better get this stuff. Sickness is going to come. Diabetes is going to come. But we got a heaven that's waiting on us. Jeff Munch, they ain't going to like how you worship. That's right. I love him. He's and he's listen. He's big enough to take care of himself. I ain't got to worry about Muncie. He D nine dozer. Tell him what door to run through. He takes the hip off tinges. The will of God. And watch this. Why are we worried about what people think about us? How we worship? We got a mature church. We got to grow up. I got a I got a daughter watching how her daddy worships. That means something to me. I got a church that's sitting under my leadership. I better know how to get in the presence of God. Because, you listen, if you put the wrong captain up there, it affects everything. Leanne Muncy prayed, how many years for Jeff? Over 25. And y'all are telling her to settle down. Her husband's on fire. He loves God. He's sold out. He's in love with Jesus Christ. Why would we stop? Why would you stop? Why would we stop? Church, why would we stop? I ain't going to stop. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop in the deal. I had people tell me, well, Brian, you're divorced. Look, lean in. Y'all read my lips. I don't care. And neither does Jesus. See, sometimes you've got to go through the valley. When you're talking about somebody, won't you walk a mile in their shoes? But why, why don't you put their shoes on just for a little bit and see how they feel? I'm so thankful today that God didn't give up on me. Aren't you glad that God didn't give up on you? Yeah. How many of y'all are glad today God didn't give up on you? Amen. 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 I like it down here better anyhow. I can look at y'all. Don't quit in the deal. Don't quit in the dip. Y'all got me? Everybody say this. Don't quit in the dip. Trials are going to come. Tribulation is going to come. Sickness is going to come. Death is going to come. Hard times are going to come. Bankruptcy is going to come. Foreclosure is going to come. Here's my question. Y'all ready? Let's be the church. You ready? Why do we think we're exempt of that? What if I told you that God can put you through something to make you something to give somebody else something? You see what I'm saying? Come on, Elkhorn. Let's just be the church. Amen. It's been a long time since I've been down here with y'all. Amen. I'm ready. How many of y'all are ready right now in Jesus Christ's name? I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. He's worthy of it all. I'm going to give him praise whether my neighbor does or not. Come on. Let's give God praise in this house. Come on. Hallelujah. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Woo. Hallelujah. All right. Here's what I wrote. Church, here's the way you beat the devil. If he knocks you down seven times, get up. If he knocks you down eight times, get up. If he knocks you down nine, get up. Thank y'all for knowing you. That's good. So listen, that's how you beat him. Because he's, listen to me. I promise you, when y'all, you see them doors through him, when y'all walk out, he's going to meet you right there. Oh, it's good up in here. The oil is thick today. And oh, by the way, I think God has transitioned Elkhorn. I'm going to prophesy this. Yeah, I think, I think he has transitioned us for the latter rain. For what's coming. God's preparing. God's preparing us for what's coming. So we can handle his glory. Amen. So welcome to church. You say, Brian, I, I'm in the dip. Listen to me. Get out. Get out. If God lets you in, He can get you out. Amen? Get out of the deal.
Christianity is a fight. How many of y'all know that? Listen, you ain't going to get this. For, I don't care what any, any Bible school teacher, any theologian told you. Just say your ABCs and everything will be okay. That's called a lie. That's called a lie. How many of y'all been told that before? Just admit, believe, and confess. And everything will be good. Well, that's a lie. Because when you change partners, the one you left, they jealous. <laughs> they greedy. So how do you do it? You keep the faith and you believe God's going to do what He said He's going to do. How do you do it? Everybody say, keep the faith. Say it again, keep the faith. Here we go. And believe God is going to do what He says He's going to do. Just believe it. So we're going to go into invitation. God, I delivered what you told me to deliver. God, I thank you for all these precious people. Every one of them is precious. Every one of them, God. I don't care warts and all. God, we just love you in this place. I'm so thankful to be a part of a church of God that believes in the hope of Jesus Christ. That believes, God, we don't have to stay in the deal. So God, right now, rescue somebody. Hallelujah. Rescue somebody right now, God. Rescue that marriage. Rescue them, them youth and children. God, rescue us in this place. God, well, hallelujah. Lord, save us from ourselves. Oh, that's a word right there. Lord, save us from ourselves. And God, I pray we worship you today like it's our last worship service. God, I know you failed last week, but God, fall again. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Bless this praise team. Anoint them. Let them walk in your favor. Bless these people. Keep them. May your countenance be upon them. May you be gracious unto them. And give them peace. In Jesus' name. Everybody look at me. Don't quit in the... Don't quit in the... Don't quit in the... Don't y'all quit. Don't y'all quit. Look at me. I love y'all. Don't y'all quit. Senior in high school? Been tough, hasn't it? My heart breaks for the senior class. But here's what I'm excited about. Y'all have got so much Jesus in you. You know how much of a, a blessing y'all can be to other students? I mean, listen. I know it's been tough. But get out of that deal. Encourage them. Wrap your arms around them. Say, listen, I know it's a tough season. I know we may not get to walk across the stage, but God's already walked across my stage. God is the encore. God is the best thing that's happened in my life. And if He done it for you, and if He done it for you, He'll do it for all of us. Amen? So in Jesus' name, this altar is open. I love you deeply and dearly. And let's celebrate God. Let's welcome Him back in. Amen? So God, have your way. Shake us like a rug. In Jesus' name. In all God's people's name.